Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we find the equation of a straight line uh, when we've been given a point and we're told the gradient or when we've got a parallel line and a point uh, also when we've got two points and also when we're trying to find a coordinate when we're given the gradient so there's lots to talk about here before we get started if you haven't watched a video on how to plot straight lines and finding the equation of a straight line from a diagram definitely watch them because I'm going to use the same method and if you've watched that one uh, those two videos first this will make so much more sense so definitely watch them before starting on this one if you have watched them brilliant uh, this will make so much more sense so let's get started first question here I want to work out the equation of a line that passes through the point two three and we're told it has the gradient of two so straight away what we can do is we can go well okay I've got y equals 2x. So remember, the equation of a straight line is y equals mx plus c, where m is a gradient. Tells us the gradient, brilliant. What we need to do now is work out where this crosses the y-axis. Now, I don't have a diagram or anything like that, but what I do have, or what I can draw, is a table. So remember, if you want the y-intercept, if you remember from my previous video when we had the diagrams, if x is 0, whatever the y-coordinate is, that is the y-intercept. But I have this coordinate here, 2, 3. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to write the x-coordinate starting with 0, because that's what I want. And I'm going to go 1, and then 2. You can go 3, 4 if you wish, but what I care about is this one here. So when x is 2, y is 3. So I can put that in there. Now we're told the gradient is 2. Now if you remember from the previous video, what that means is, is that the y values are increasing by 2 every time. Okay, so if I have 3, it goes up 2 to 5, and up 2 again to 7. If we were to fill this in, it would go up 2 again to 9. So the gradient being 2 means it's going up. The y coordinates here are going up in 2s. Now, if they're going up in twos, I want that one. So I'm just going to go backwards. I'm going to go down in twos. So three take away two is one. Take away two again is minus one. So this is how I work out what the y-intercept is. When x is zero, y is minus one, which means it crosses the y-axis at minus one. And that is the equation of our line. y equals two x minus one. Let's do the same thing here, but the slightly different gradient. Notice here, the x coordinate is minus 4. So I'm not going to start at 0 because I'm going to have to go backwards here. So I'm going to start at minus 4. So just spot that one when you're starting to draw your table. So minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and 0. That's the one I care about because I already know the gradient. It says it has the gradient of a half. So I can put that straight away. Y equals a half X, and I'm trying to figure out that Y intercept. Now I'm told that when X is minus four, Y is one, and the gradient is a half. So it means this is going up by a half every time. That's what it means for the gradient. So just work it out. Well, one add a half is one and a half. Add another half is two. Add another half is two and a half. Add another half is three. Keep going if you wish, but all we care about is this coordinate here. So when x is 0, y is 3, which means the y-intercept is 3. And there we go. There is the equation of the line that we are after. What it could also do, or what a question also could be, is if you have a parallel line and it passes through a point. Now remember, from our plotting straight lines, Parallel lines have exactly the same gradient. So when I look at this line here, the gradient is minus 3. And that's all it takes. So now we're in exactly the same position as we are here. We've got a point, and we know the gradient is minus 3. So again, I need to find the value of uh, y when x is 0. The x-coordinate I've been given here is 2, so I can start at 0. So 0, 1, 2, I'll just do a few others, 3, 4. Okay, let's put our coordinate in. So when x is 2, y is minus 5, and we know the gradient is minus 3, so it means it's going down in 3s. So minus 5, go down in 3s, minus 8, minus 11, and so on and so forth. So if I'm going down in 3s this way, which is the gradient, going the other way, I need to go up in 3s. So minus 5, go up 3, would be minus 2, and go up 3 again, would be 1. So the y-intercept here would be 1, gradient is minus 3, so let's put it all together, y equals minus 3x, and the y-intercept is 
1, so plus 1. And there you have it, there is the equation of that line. y equals minus 3x plus 1. Same thing here, but sometimes I like to try and make it a bit tricky. So notice this line they've given us is 6y equals 2x plus 1. Now remember, if that's the case, we have to do a little bit of rearranging because it has to be in the format of y equals mx plus c. It can't be 6, 2, 3, whatever y. It has to be y equals. So hopefully, if you've seen my other rearranging videos or if you've watched the video on how to work out the gradient and y-intercept, I talk about this. So all I'm going to do to get this so it's y on its own is I'm just going to divide everything by 6. Nice and simple. And that means I'm going to have y equals 2 over 6x plus 1 over 6. Now, of course, if I've got 2 over 6, it's just a fraction. 2 over 6, we can simplify that to be one third. So remember what I set up here, the gradient uh, or, um, or parallel lines is the same. So the gradient here for this line is one third. So the gradient for my line here will also be one third. So I'm going to write y equals one third x ready. And now I just need to work out the y intercept. So again, we start off with zero, just check the coordinate. It starts at two, so that's fine. So I start at zero, one, two, I'll just do a few more just for the sake of showing you how it works. Let's put our coordinate in. X is 2, Y is 2. And we know the gradient is a third, so it's going up in thirds. So 2 and a third, 2 and 2 thirds, and then 3. And if you want to carry on, 3 and 1 third, and so on and so forth. But if I'm going up in thirds... I need to go this way, so down in thirds. So two, take away a third, will leave me with one and two thirds. Take away another third, leave me with one and one third. Again, as we said before, we want the coordinate when x is zero. So the y-intercept here is one and one third. You could write that as a top heavy if you wished. So y equals one third x, and then you can convert that to top heavy. So one times three is three. Add 1 is 4, so that would be 4 over 3. You could also, if you want to get really posh, times everything by 3 and then leave it as 3y uh, equals a third x times 3 would just leave you with x, and then 4 thirds times 3 would just leave you with 4. So you could leave it as 3y equals x plus 4. All three of those would be absolutely fine and would get you the marks. Okay, so that's if we have the gradient and a point and parallel and a point. What happens? if we're not told what the gradient is and we just have two points like in the examples we have here well it's no different we still use our tables and we fill them in with what we've got so I'm going to start at zero because remember that's our most crucial one here none of these are before zero so zero one two three four five and six when x is three y is two that goes in there, and then when x is 4, y is also 4. So there we go, I put in my two points there. This one's nice and simple, because we can just look straight away and go, well, what's it going up in? It's going up in 2s, which means our gradient is going to be 2. So y equals 2x, and then obviously 2, 4, 6, 8. But if we're going that way, it's easy, it's going up in 2s. Going that way, we're going down in 2s. So that'd be 0, minus 2, and minus 4. Remember, that's the coordinate we want because when x is 0, wherever y is there is our y-intercept, which in this case is minus 4. So the equation of that one, y equals 2x minus 4. Okay, let's have a go at this one here then. Exactly the same thing. Um, that's a 2, that's a 5, so I need to start at 0. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to stick 6 on there as well as I've got space. So when x is 2, y is 1, and when x is 5, y is 10. So again, we need now need to spot what this is going up in. So it's going from 1 to 10, so you could go, okay, well, let's go up in 1, so 1, 2, 3, nope, doesn't work, up in 2s, 1, uh, 3, 5, 10, nope, that doesn't work, go up in 3s, 1, 4, go up in 3s again, 7, and then 10. So this one here is going up in 3s which means the gradient is 3. So y equals 
3x. We then need to figure out what the y-intercept is. Well, we know it's going up in threes this way. So if we go the other way, we're going down in threes, which would mean that's minus two. That would mean that's minus five. That's our important one, x is zero, y is minus five, so it crosses the y-axis at minus five. And we have our equation of the line, y equals three x minus five. Okay, let's start to get a little bit tricky. So, let's have a go at this one here then. So again, the x-coordinates are all positive, so I'm going to start at zero and build my way up on the x values, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So when x is 4, y is 5, and when x is 8, y is 3. So here we go then, we need to again figure out what's going on. Well this one is decreasing, so it's going to be a negative. How much is it decreasing by? Well, try 1, so 4, 3, nope, that doesn't work. Try a half, so that would be 4.5, 4, 3.5, and, and 3. There we go, it's a half. So if I'm taking away a half each time, I'm going to be left with that there, brilliant. So we're going down, or we're taking away a half each time. So I'm going to start my equation, so y equals minus a half x, and we then need to figure out what the y-intercept is. But if I'm taking away a half going this way, going the other way I'm going to add a half. So that'll be five and a half, that'll be six, six and a half, and then seven. So when x is zero, y is seven, giving us the y-intercept of 7, and we have our answer, y equals minus a half x plus 7. Okay, this next one is a bit tricky. It starts here at minus 4, so I have to start at minus 4. All the others, all the coordinates were positive, so I started at 0. This one here starts at minus 4, so I have to do that. So minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4... Five, and I go all the way up to 6 because that's what that one is there. And I've got minus 4 um, and 2. So when x is minus 4, y is 2. And when x is 6, y is 0 like so. Okay. Now if you remember, or if you've seen my previous video, when you're trying to guess something like this, there's loads and loads of gaps here. That you could be here forever trying to figure out what this is. So a little trick I showed on the previous video of when we had the equation of a line from a diagram is you can go, okay, well, what is the change here? Well, it's gone from 2 to 0, so it's taken away 2. So this is how you can find what's happening for the gradient. It's gone down in 2. Now, how many squares has it taken to do that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we divide that by 10. That is our gradient. But of course, that's a fraction. We can simplify that to be minus 1 fifth by halving both of them. I think that's going to be our gradient using that trick. Let's have a look. 2 take away a fifth is 1 and 4 fifths. Take away another fifth, 1 and 3 fifths. Keep taking away a fifth, so one and two fifths, one and one fifth, one, then four fifths, three fifths, two fifths, one fifth, and then zero. Boom, there you go. We're taking away a fifth each time. That is the gradient. So what I'm gonna do is, is start my equation. So y equals minus one fifth x, and then there's my coordinate look. When x is zero, y is one and one fifth, so that is my y-intercept. And again, you can convert that to a top heavy. So minus 1 fifth x. And 1 times 5 is 5, plus 1 is 6, so 6 over 5. And again, if you want to be posh, you could times everything by 5 to have 5y equals minus x plus 6. So all three of those would get you the marks. So just to go over that point again, how did I find the gradient? I looked at the 2 and the 0. What happened? How do I go from 2 to 0? I take away 2. And then how long? How many uh, squares does it take to get there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I divide by 10 and I just simplified that gradient there. So that is probably as hard, or one of the questions that is as hard as it gets. What you could also be asked though, in the exam, and I've seen this come up, is something like this. where we're told what the gradient is, we're told what one point is, and we have to work out what the y value is of this coordinate here.
So as you probably guessed by now, we're going to literally just substitute our values in. Well, this one's a negative, so I'm going to start with that, which is minus 2, and then build my way up, all the way up to 5 for that one there. So when x is minus 2, y is 1, and when x is 5, we need to know what this value is here. This is our mystery value. That's what our answer is. Well, the gradient is 4, tells us that. So it means this is all going up in 4s. So just fill it in. 1 add 4, 5 add 4, 9 add 4, 13 add 4, 17 add 4, 21 add 4, 25 add 4, 29. So when x is 5... Y is 29, so quite simply, your answer for K is 29. Uh, this one here, let's do the same thing. Uh, the gradient of the line here is 3 and passes through these points here. Don't know what that one is. That one is uh, positive 3, so we definitely uh, need to be careful with this one because you don't know if this is. I'm going to go that way or it's going to go this way. So I'm going to put the 3 in the middle. And you might need to increase, if you're doing this in the real thing, you might need to increase your table left or right. It's not a problem because we're just messing about trying to work this out. I'm going to put it roughly in the middle and see what we're going to do. So let's stick it on oh now, stick it there. Okay, so x is 3, y is 16. Now the gradient here is 3, which means if I go this way, it's going to go up in 3. So that would be. 19 and then obviously go up in threes again uh, that would be 22 now we need to get to minus 2 so I'm clearly not going to go that way I need to go the other way so I'll fill this in here like so and then let's go down in threes so that would be 13 and remember I'm aiming for minus 2 so that would be 13 down 3 would be 10 down 3 would be 7 down 3 4 down 3 uh, would be 1, down 3 again would be minus 2, there we go. I've now hit my y is minus 2, which means my k, the x-coordinate, when y is minus 2, k is minus 3. And just to show you uh, an example of when it's a horrible negative fraction, exactly the same thing. That's a positive 3, that's minus 1, so I'm going to start with minus 1 and then build my way up to 3, like so. I'll put 4 in just for lols. And let's fill it in. So k, we don't know, but when x is 3, y is 7. The gradient is minus 3, which means I'm going this way. I'm taking away... Sorry, it's not minus 3, it's minus a third, which means when I'm going this way, I'm taking away a third. So that, that would be 6 and 2 thirds. This would be um, 6 and a third... And then this would be 6, if you wanted just to do a couple just to get the pattern, that's not a problem. But of course, if I'm going this way, I'm taking away a third. Going this way, I'm adding a third. So that would be 7 and a third. 7 and 2 thirds. Then it would be 8. Add another third. 8 and a third. So what would my value for k be when uh, x is minus 1? It would be 8 and 1 third. That's what K would be. So it's just an example of how we can work out missing coordinates when we're told a gradient and another point. And I have seen that come up once or twice um, in actual GCC exams. So that's everything, guys, to do with how we find the equation of a line through a point and a gradient, a parallel line and a, and a point, and then two points as well. So hopefully that helps. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.